I studied in a scientific high school, but after I decided to go to the university to study social uh, sciences and uh, humanities. That's why I think that uh, everyone has is a hybrid, especially during the high school. You can have lots of interests. And this is the same, I think, for my students. We have to cultivate, we have to boost their multiple interests. And so uh, one approach is not enough to go uh, to meet, to encounter uh, all the curiosities of our students they have about the world around us. So I think that uh, uh, 30, uh, 30, 60 degrees uh, uh, vision of uh, knowledge and culture is something, it's a must for our teachers and uh, that's why uh, my, my tip, my suggestion is to, tr to try to match always non-STEM with STEM subjects. By adding STEM topics connected to real life examples from science, technology, engineering and mathematics to my classes of English, I boost my, my students' learning which becomes visual, peer-supported, curiosity-oriented, and games-based. My students' learning being visual is a great asset because uh, images and multimedia are the most powerful stimuli nowadays. The fact that uh, their learning has become uh, peer-supported is also very important because uh, students learn best with and from their peers. Learning being curiosity powered is also of great importance because natural curiosity and imagination lead to exploration and discovery, which are good basis for quite a number of careers later in their life. STEM topics to my teaching process uh, proves to be very beneficial for students. Um, I realized that when we put students into an environment when they have more topics together, including STEM, uh, they kind of link all of that information to the real world and they memorize concepts more easily. Adding a bit of STEM to my English teaching is quite beneficial uh, because the students can become aware of the interconnectedness of all the things and all the subjects they learn at school. If I can compare it to an apple pie, my lessons are nice and sweet, but <laughs> they taste way better when you add a bit of cinnamon or some vanilla frosting on top. It's amazing how, how easily you can actually facilitate the linking of STEM and non-STEM subjects. It's actually, it's, it's, it's quite natural, you know, that you, particularly in my case, I, I integrated geography, but I integrated into that, I integrated geography with um, maths and um, ICT, and it was, it was quite seamless. They they actually worked very, very well together, and, 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 and they coordinated, they, the collaboration between both ended up in a, in a really rich lesson. So I, I would say, uh, have a go, it's, 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 it's quite straightforward. Um, come up with your, your your main topic and then see what elements of STEM you can bring into that. And, and you'll find that it's quite easy to do. It's not challenging at all. I, I, I found it really rich. I, I found it as a teacher, uh, something that I really enjoyed. I wouldn't have done too too often before, to be honest. But I feel it's something that you can really do. And, and for, for, the, for the, 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 the pupils, it actually, you know, ticks many boxes in a cross-curricular way. And it actually adds, 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 adds a kind of a variety and a, and a, and a, a freshness to the lesson that, that when we don't focus on books and we tend to focus on textbooks a lot and it kind of that impinges on the naturalness of the, of the teaching and learning. So I think learning scenarios are a great, great way to open up and add a freshness to our teaching and learning. So um, I would say have a go and it's amazing you'll find already many of your lessons probably include elements of, of STEM and non-STEM linkage.